I am uh, the owner of Lundgren Group, and Colleen Ketchum is a colleague and a friend of mine. Um, I was born and raised in uh, Matamidai. I currently live there and reside there with my four children and family. Um, we congregate just on the road here at a church. Um, that's where Colleen and I had met several years ago. Um, and uh, we are both, uh, we're certified as senior real estate specialists. So what we'd like to do is we work with uh, folks that are going through their transitions uh, from a downsizing of a home to what is that major move like, um, kind of working through that. We have a lot of vendors and others that we work with to kind of hopefully um, guide folks in the right directions with either estate planning, moving, or whatever that case may be. Um, today we're going to kind of talk about a little bit of what that is um, and get you kind of an idea. Uh, Colleen's been working with me for a little over five years, maybe a little bit more than that. So we've been working together and really focusing on uh, dealing with this big transition that uh, people are going to have to go through uh, at some point in their life. Um, so our biggest goal is to help plan because uh, planning really uh, puts a lot of ease on you yourself as well as the family um, as you transition into the next stages of, of where that may be. So um, I'm going to kind of let it go with clean here. I'll jump in every now and then. but. Uh, um, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to ask us. The life you want. Um, after 65, we've already been where we've been in our life, and our next uh, next uh, traveling on that journey is um, retirement, and um, what goes after that. Um, so uh, preparing for the life you want is not just about the space. We talk about downsizing, and it's not just about you know, cleaning out the garage or getting rid of your stuff and all that kind of stuff. It's a psychological, it's a mind, it's a physical preparation for what's coming in our life. Okay, um, so, but, there's always a but. The best laid plans of mice and men often go awry, and that's where the planning comes in, is to try and, um, try and uh, get through this period of our lives without too much chaos and um, trouble. So, um, we can go to the next one, okay. So how do we do this? How do we plan for the life we want? Well, one of the things is to realize is that you are not alone. Um, you have your family, um, you discuss this with your family, um, and it's not just talking about where you wanna live, it's also about the financial needs and other resources that are available. Um, many of the things that <clears throat> and our kids don't realize that unless they've been caregivers for seniors themselves they really don't realize what's what what we're going through so um unless our kids have been doing elder care they have really no clue of what we're going to be going through and our parents and grandparents really didn't discuss it much with us um so in order to um go go continue with this process um, so that we're not suffering through our later years wondering what we're going to do and they're all up upset and nobody knows what's going on. Um, we need to start talking to our kids about this aging process and our feelings and the situations that we're going through. And one of them is to discuss our finances. Um, one of the main things we need to do is, because um, the, the kids are going to find out someday anyway when they take over the things for us. We need to get them prepared by discussing this. Um, you need to do your will. You need to have a power of attorney. You need to have a trust if you have those kinds of assets. You need to know what the title is on all of your property. Your insurances, who are the beneficiaries? You should do a living will, a health care directive. And please, leave passwords for your kids on your computers and any of your accounts. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to have access to them. Safe deposit box, where is the key and where is the safe deposit box? Where are the location of your accounts? Who is, the, who is your financial advisor? Who is your attorney, an accountant? Um, you use their strengths to assist you when you're not able to do it anymore, and this gives them all of the ammunition that they need in order to help you. Healthcare is another big issue, and it's gonna be one of the largest issues that we have in our lifestyle. Um, these are just some of the st statistics. Those who have reached 65 today can expect to live another 18 and a half years. Women live longer than men generally. So we are going to um, basically be doing things on our own. So we do doubly need to be prepared. 
Seventy percent of those over 65 will require some type of long-term care, and that's not necessarily a nursing home, but it could be assisted living, it could be in-home care. There are levels of care. So 70% um, of us are going to need that kind of assistance, and we need to be prepared for that and know what's out there. Okay, between uh, 2000 and, tw and 2010, um, there was a 68% increase and deaths due to Alzheimer's, 77% from respiratory diseases, and 45% of cancer. And that's not just age demographics, that's also um, economics and your um, ecology and all of that gets involved, your environment gets involved with that as well. Okay, there is a decline of medical practitioners, general practitioners, nursing homes, and care providers. One of the main reasons why there are less general practitioners is they're all going into specialties because there's more money in that. Um, that's why you see all of these orthopedic buildings all over the place, Summit and, and the other ones, Twin City Ortho. They're all going into specialties. So the general practitioners that would, you would generally go to for your little problems um, are declining. Uh, okay, and um, nurses, even though the, the medical profession is um, one of the best employment opportunities today, there's still a shortage on all of those services and we do expect that they will that, that shortage will continue. So we need to be prepared, not only how to take care of ourselves, but who, who's gonna be out there to help us do the things that we need done. Costs continue to rise, so we need to be aware of what insurances are available out there. Um, <coughs> Medicare, is that going to be available? And if not, again, what are we going to do for the substitute? Um, so we need to prepare. We need to know what is out there. What are our resources? Um, when you look around the community, White Bear is pretty well set. We live in an area where we do have a lot of resources. And as you can see from out there, um, there are a lot of uh, home care agencies. There are agencies that will come in and, and do uh, companion work. There are home nurses. There are, you know, we do have a variety of um, assistance here in this community, but not all communities have that. So you need to understand that if you're going to be moving up north, well, what kind of assistance do they have up there? If you are going to be moving across the state or across the, the uh, country, like to Arizona, you know, what, what is out there and how are your records going to be transferred and who, how do you find a new doctor? All of these kind of things are much more um, difficult the older you get. So um, we need to plan for those and we need to have our children aware of those, those um, resources as well so they can help us find them. And you can't be afraid to talk about it because otherwise they're not going to know and you're gonna be sitting there in chaos with your family. Okay, living arrangements. What do you and your spouse desire as you age? Um, and like we said, it's not just about cleaning the house out and getting um, everything set that way. Um, it's about making decisions about staying in your current home. Are you going to be able to do that? If your spouse passes away and you are a widow, are you going to be able to take care of that home? One of the things that we have found in our industry is that most of the times, people that are having problems, they've stayed in their homes too long. Um, the house itself becomes deteriorated. Um, they're not able to keep up the work, the maintenance, and it, uh, like I say, deteriorates. And then, of course, the value of the house deteriorates. So you need to keep that in mind. How long is too long? Um, okay, do you, do you wait until you, a certain event happens? You may lose your choices of how you want to live. Where do you want to live? What do you want to do? Who's going to take care of you? You need to think about these things. Even though you may not have it in on black and white on paper, you need to start thinking these, about these things and you need to inform your children. This is what I want. What do you think? Get them involved in this because it, it is a family process. It's not just us and our lives. We don't want them to feel that they're interfering, but yet we want them to be able to um, have their input into our lives as well. Um, so don't wait for the last minute until something happens because you'll lose your control on that one. Um, downsize to smaller home. Um, many people are doing that now and it does make sense. If you're in the big two-story house, you can't climb up those stairs. Sure, you could get a Stairmaster, but how long is that gonna last? And one of the things about downsizing to a smaller home that you wanna do now and preparing for that is to start looking around in your community. What's out there? Are you gonna wait to go to assisted living? You can put your name on the list. Are you gonna to go to an apartment? Put your name on the list there. There are waiting lists on all of these things. Um, are you going to um, go into a townhouse or 
um, a condo, well, start looking what's out on the market. Get yourself familiar with what's out there so you know ahead of time and take your kids with you. Um, they want to know where mom and dad are going to be living and, and whether it's a safe place for them as well. Okay, what are the desires of your spouse? Um, I can remember a couple of times when I've had a home for sale. Um, the woman loved it, she wanted it, but he was not ready to move and he wasn't going to move off the dime. So <laughs> I think many of us have probably gone through that ourselves. Um, so you need to put your heads together. What is it that we really want? How do we want our final years to be? Do, are you going to move up north through the woods? Are you going to move into town, downtown, and just walk through the skyways? What is it that, that you want? How do you want your final years to be? Um, and you need to discuss this, you know, give yourself a timeline. Okay, we'll stay here for another five years. Maybe we'll look at it, see how we're doing. Is our health going to hold out for these plans? If not, you know, you need to have the flexibility to change. Um, so just keep that in mind. You need to discuss that. You need to both be happy. You can't just have go along with what the other person says all the time. Um, a lot of give and take. But we all know that. We've been married a long time, right? So, <laughs> okay. Um, taking charge at the end of life. This is one of the big important things. How do we want, at the end of the journey, how do you want that to be? Um, there are, there, there's hospice care, of course. You can go that route. But how, when it really comes to, when you're doing your, your, um, your estate planning, they will ask you to, to uh, fill out a health care directive. And that health care directive will give the person that you designate the power to decide what you want done when you can't make that decision for yourself anymore. And it will not come into effect until you cannot make that decision for yourself anymore. So you need to be... Um, cognizant of that and to pick a person within your family or if you don't have a family that's close by a friend or, or other relative that knows what you want knows how you feel spiritually as well as you know psychologically how you feel about this last planning in your life um, so it's important to think about that with all of your children talk to them about it um, I've had three experiences where um, the person has um, been on their deathbed and they didn't want any additional um, treatment and it was a very peaceful and very loving and very serene um, occasion even though it was you know we were losing our loved one um, we all walked away from that with good memories and um, so you really do need to take the time to talk to your children about it. it's one of the hardest things to say well this is what I want um, and they may say yeah mom but this or that but you need to you need to um, you need to do that <laughs> so okay um, we need to embrace the reality that life and death are on the same road traveled to attain the destination at the end of our journey and what we mean by that is that go ahead and live your life but be aware that the next stage of our life is going to have a lot of ups and downs and we need to be prepared for those psychologically as well as doing all the other steps the estate planning the where am I going to live and, and bring your family into that. Um, they're the ones that are, are going to be left with dealing with whatever you leave behind. So they don't want our stuff, but maybe they want to hold our hands as long as possible and, and share that journey with us. And we want to be able to share that with them as well. So um, that being said, um, yeah, they're here, okay. right oh, here. There. Yeah. Um, so before we end here, just want to kind of recap all that kind of what we were discussing here the biggest thing is just having this discussion a lot of the information and resourcing that we have found to be um, a real good guide for us to kind of assist and, and help others is um, we've we've picked up a book uh, called the other talk it's actually um, been brought out here by the WARP um, and it's got some really good information it's a very simple um, easy way to a kind of approach things when talking with family. If you don't have kids, find a good friend or somebody that can you can really lean on, give a shoulder to, um, and have some good discussions. So um, again, a lot of this information that we've shared um, and that we've learned over time, because uh, there's many times where we get into situations where um, 
the family hasn't been prepared and it becomes as stressful as all can be and it drags out for the longest time. Um, when we see when preparation goes in the hand, everyone has a direction or has a, a, a purpose or a job to complete uh, within the family or friend and then that just makes that whole part that less of a worry for everyone.